unlike uh, the United States, uh, the other uh, largest economy in the world, which is uh, has been an immigrant society, and will continue to be able to draw immigrants from all, all over the world because of its population stock and because of its culture and political history, uh, China is like the total opposite. Um, it's, it's highly homogeneous and also it's so large. So unlike, uh, say, some European countries, uh, which are uh, much smaller in its population, uh, you can count on immigration to uh, offset some of the, uh, the needs in the economy. Um, but in the Chinese case is both large and also it's uh, well, culturally and ethnically so homogeneous. So China would have these double challenges, uh, unlike any other countries in, in other country in the world, uh, China would face uh, the challenge to, uh, to rely on immigrants, uh, rely on migra immigration as a way to uh, uh, to adapt to an aging and uh, shrinking uh, population. Uh, now, China actually has a long way to go, uh, especially uh, politically and culturally. And what we've seen in the last just a few years is a more confident and is more nationalistic uh, China. And that nationalistic uh, society is going to be more repellent to a lot of immigrants. So aside from uh, the size issue, China is so large, you would have to have a lot of immigrant, uh, immigrants to make a difference. Uh, China actually now, because of its growth, because of its uh, economic and political confidence, it actually runs in the uphill uh, battle uh, in being the open society to uh, welcome uh, immigrants from all over the world. So the trend we've seen in the last few years is actually a worrying trend uh, in seeing China to be an open society, welcoming to uh, people around the world. And uh, so immigration, as we're seeing now, uh, is extremely unlikely to provide any help for China.